So another Tom Das Takwa. He actually yesterday, uh, last week, we were listening how uh, he his um, birth was so to say uh, inspired by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And I know also there are many other stories where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would tell his disciples, his followers, that they will beget children that are very special. So that is the case when uh, Radharani is there with Krishna in one person, then many special souls take birth. And they have the chance to do amazing service. So we hear today about Naratam Das Thakur's childhood. It's always so auspicious and purifying to listen about the life history of great souls. Because then we have a very deep feeling for them, for their life, and also for their feelings. And like this, I pray that some of the feelings of Chaitanya Ch mercy case, you know, like <laughs> we are all mercy cases. We need the mercy. So another Tom, he is a very great example how much mercy a soul can get, how much mercy can flow into the heart of those who want to be a Dasi of Srimati Radhika. He is not the mercy case. I am the mercy case. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, sometimes the tongue is just... So, childhood of Naratam Das Thakur. Like the faces of the moon, Srila Naratam grew day by day. And we know, we remember from last week that he just came and took his body here on this planet Earth after Mahaprabhu had left. In a great festival, Raja Krishnananda, that is his father, performed a ceremony that's called Anna Prashad, or the Prashana ceremony. This is when the child eats its first grains. That's a typical Indian kind of uh, initiation that the child now, after receiving mother's milk and breasts, now they start eating by themselves. However, when the grains were placed in his mouth, the child turned his face away. That was very amazing. Everyone became worried. But an astrologer made a calculation and said, this child will never eat anything else but she, Krishna's prasad. Ha, ah, you see that the empowered astrologers can see the qualities of a soul that has come right where's our kishori she left yes left my god i'm so sorry she left <laughs> she hasn't so that huh no no no, no sorry just continue yeah 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 i'm just joking so a real astrologer, those who have been blessed by the light of knowledge and the light of love, they can uh, look at a person's time of birth and they feel what the soul has to experience as a tendency. So when they were shocked that the child didn't want to eat the grains, because that's very unusual. Usually they make also kheer, like a ri sweet rice. And the children, they, they are very greedy about, about so sweet things. No? It's not that they eat uh, big things, but like a liquid, a uh, small touch on the tongue, on the, on the, in the mouth. I have seen many 
children of the devotees who came to Mungeraj Mandir and to receive this special blessings for their child from Gurudev's hands. Because it's always a very auspicious time. So the astrologer said, this child will never eat anything else but prashat. This child is blessed by a higher taste. Da -de -da -de. My God, it's you. <laughs> oh my God, are you going on a tour? Arigato gozaimasu. So nice to see you again. <laughs> look, look, Cora. Who's there? Who's there in Mumbai Rajwani, our photographer? Radhe, Radhe. Oh my God. Radhe, Radhe. Radhe, Radhe. Thank you. Radhe, Radhe. Nice to see you. Big yeah. hug to you yeah. and have a nice day, uh, time with all the group. Wow. And also big hug to Himagiri. Yeah. <laughs> we love you. you. Nice to see you. I love you. <laughs> Thank you. Adi. Adi, Adi. He was actually, I think, what is your name again? Sanatan? No. What? Sanatan. He, he taught Sanatan. Sanatan. I forgot. Yes, Sanatan. He was in uh, Ju July, June. He came with uh, the group of Himagiri, and we had a very beautiful time together here. I just saw him now mm -hmm. after a long time. So. Usually the children who like to have sweets on their mouth are very happy to receive this uh, kheer, the sweet rice. But this child was amazing, always turned his head away. And so the, the, the parents realized this child needs some prashad. He will not take any sweet rice, which was cooked by, uh, you know, anyone. No, no, it has to be Prashad means why we make these offerings to Radha Mohan, to our taco G's. We do it so we have um, a nice energy of love and devotion in everything that we put in our bodies. That is the secret of, of Prashad. So Naratam Das Taco, he was from childhood only attracted to Prashad. I think some others were like this, but I forgot. So it's a special sign. Like nowadays, we, uh, I mean, as a child, I was eating everything that the parents put in my mouth <laughs> because I'm a very greedy and ignorant person. But special souls, they come and they have also already a higher taste of this, you know, blessed uh, divine. Prashad. That is explained here that Naratam, he wants to only eat Prashad, Krishna Prashad. That is very special. And it's also very special if we can give our children Prashad, some blessings, something to bring love, something to connect with divine love. Every day, a little bit. And to also help the children to understand this principle of prashad. That is the flying mercy. The flying mercy is always something that Gurudev was explaining. It comes from the lips of Radha Mohan. And because it comes from the lips, it is so sweet and it is so relishable and nourishing my soul, my inner consciousness about who I am. That is prashad and the flying kisses. And of course, there are so many, many deep um, meditations about prashad and the power of prashad. So Naratam Das Thakur, he came from the family also of a Raja, of a king. And his father's name is Sri Krishnananda. And according to the family tradition, this deity of Sri Krishna was worshipped in the house of his father. And when the prashad was brought from his deity 
Naratam baby Naratam began to blissfully eat it. So that is not artificial. That this baby, he, he liked to have prashad. He likes to eat the mercy, the flying kisses, the feelings of exchange and love that is happening through sanctifying or let's say connecting our cooking with the divine, you know, love or divine feelings. Often I think, well, they don't need to eat, no? Radha and Krishna, they have so many offerings. My mind is very tricky. Sometimes my mind says, oh, they get so much nice prasad in Mungeraj Mandir. Why should I cook? <laughs> my mind is very naughty. <laughs> but actually, yes, it's a personal exchange. And it happens between Takuji or our dear most Radha Mohan, Nitai Goranga, and those who are having them in their homes, in their altars, in their hearts. And I know devotees who told me, oh, I do my offering inside. I do the manasik offering. But I tell you, I'm not so advanced. <laughs> I like to do a plate and a drink and, you know, give them whatever I can give them or I try to connect in the feeling of love and loving exchange. That is the meaning of Prashad. So from this day on, when the king was seeing that his son was so elevated that he only accepts this Prashad from, from, the, from Krishna, they had a Krishna deity, Sri Krishna. Of course, probably also maybe Srimati Radhika, it's not mentioned. So they then he said that everyone should only give him Krishna Prashad. He was very uh, conscious, the king was very conscious to receive a child that had such a sensitivity that he didn't want to accept anything that was not the Prashad or the Ada Ramrita, the leftover remnants and touched by Krishna's mouth or Srimati Radhita's mouth. And uh, it always helps me to remember the importance of offering, you know, my love in the form of cooking and in the form of thinking of them. Because for myself, it is very easy to think about Krishna or Srimati Radhika as an all-pervading truth. That is very easy. I like to feel them everywhere and see them everywhere. But what I have to learn is to become more personal, that I see that they are there, they need new clothes, they need more food, they want to have an exchange. Radhe Radhe Gurudev, Anna Kaji, Jainanda Maharaj, Ah, Mahatma Ji, Radhe Radhe. <laughs> See, Gurudev is also accepting Prashad. So nice. Radhe Radhe, everyone. We are just talking about the importance of Prashad, Gurudev. And Narottam Das Thakur was so special that even as a baby in his uh, Anna Prasan Prashad, uh, ceremony, he will only take prasad. He will not accept anything else. And it seems that his his consciousness was so okay. elevated. Shila <coughs> Naratam's extraordinary bodily luster, sharp intelligence, and sweet words attracted everyone's heart. <laughs> so just this morning, I was t uh, meditating about some of the qualities of Srimati Radhika and one of the main or one of the very uh, obvious um, qualities is her sweet words and her sweet voice. 
And now we hear also that Shilanara Tom, as a child even, he had sweet words. And I remember on the Sunday class, Gurudev said to us how to read and how to express. We try to make it a sweet voice, a sweet feeling, and a good, also strong voice, so that the feelings can transfer, you know, even by this um, media of Zoom, where we are countries and continents apart, but we can transfer the feelings that we have when we are touched also by reading or by the, you know, things that we hear from each other. So the sweet words that attracted everyone's heart are so important because it is an expression of love, of consciousness also. As we remember, Shilanada Tamdas Thakur is in his eternal form, uh, Champak Manjari. Champaka Manjari. So here we see also that even from childhood on, he was sweet. He was very sharp and very uh, attractive because also he was shining. His love was shining from inside to out. Shining in his words, shining in his bodily effulgence and shining also with a smartness that was very attractive. At the age of five, Shinaratam received the chalk in the hand and began his studies. So he already was so um, such a good student that at five years, the parents give him into the studies and the chalk and i remember you also remember udafji and all of you maybe how when we go to school at that time the teacher was writing the chalk you know writing on the board and the black or the blue board and then sometimes also they call the students to also do some writing or learn the subject so and he from his childhood, he showed extraordinary capacity in learning Sanskrit scriptures like Vyakaran. And he mastered all these scriptures in a very short time. So we have heard about this, you know, that many, like Rupa Goswami and also Sanatan Goswami and many of them in their childhood and even Chaitanya, our Goranga, he also learned these the sanskrit uh, logic shastras nyaya there are many many different kind of shastras in the vedas but many of them who went to a uh, university of 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 knowledge they started with these lectures or with these classes and they could you know easily go through the subjects it was not difficult for them like, you know, ourselves and sometimes the Sanskrit and all these, you know, Shastras, they are a little bit difficult, but for them, it was natural and they like to do it. And that's why they started with five years so early. And then later on, they became in their adulthood, they became only ecstatic. They just lived in their feelings. Although they had this vast knowledge, they had this vast intelligence, you know, later on, they just gave it up into the feelings of their devotion and into the feelings of their services. They master the scriptures in a very short time. So that's amazing. And we feel wow, I will never master them. But then our Gurudev is so merciful. He says, you don't need to master. Just remember that you are a Dasi of Srimati Radhika. Right, Gurudev, you always say this. Don't even chant Hare Krishna. Just chant, I'm a Dasi of Srimati Radhika. <laughs> you said this on Sunday, Gurudev. <laughs> that was the 
I thought, yes, I'm such a fool. Just remember this, don't uh, be in the rituals. Radhe Radhe. Yes. Jai. Jai. Shri Radhe Jai Gurudev. Sorry, I have no camera today, so I can't. But you just inspired a memory. It is said, I don't remember if it comes from Gurudev, maybe. It is said that one word of Shastra, one word only, contains all the truth of all the universe, <laughs> if we understand it properly. Yeah, that's the matter of consciousness, of course. Shastra, in Sanskrit they say sadhu, the words of sadhu, like uh, my Uddhava, sadhu, Shastra, you see in Shastra. Yeah. And Guru Vakya, these are all one, never with three types, three varieties. Sadhu will say same thing Shastra you can find. Shastra is to confirm. Guru Vakya is also talking that. It cannot be separate. Jitte se karo akho means you fix it in mind, it will never diverse and in between. No. Akho. One point. This is the beauty of sadhus. Realize so. Wonderful. Thank you, Gurudev. This is also yes. not from that prasna you come in. <coughs> yeah. It means that uh, the realized soul, the completely realized soul, only speaks truth. Astra. What you will speak, it will be Sastra. It will be Sastra, exactly. Although so you know, we, but you will never say out of Sastra. Because, because the influence of Pradini Shakti, the protection of Pradini Shakti. Mm. Therefore, Sadhu say is protected by Radhika. Jai Ho! This is Radhika. <coughs> they never create conflict in which. Radha Dasi living in Radha Shakti is always expressing all the things with a very sweet and loving uh, heart. And so. And they will never conflict off. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> That's a. Good thing to meditate on, no? Before I say something, before I act in a certain way, what is the effect? What is the, is it glorifying Shimati Radhika? Is it in the love of her heart, in her service mood? <laughs> So, from his very childhood, the princely Naratom had an extraordinary love for Sri Harinam, 
for the holy name of Srimad Bhagavat, for the devotees of the Lord and the deities of the Lord, and seeing his disinterest in sense gratification, his loving father Krishna Nanda and his dedicated mother Narayani became worried. While the devotees became astonished and ecstatic. <laughs> yes, I'm going now. <laughs> so we see that the parents, they were so loving and so much supporting, but they also became a little bit worried because in the Indian culture, the son uh, is supposed to take over the the duties of the of the kingdom and he was a king so they he was the only son and we have this in many many uh occasions that they they like that the child is a spiritual personality but if they see that they have no interest even like raguna das goswami we know also uh then the parents become worried and then the parents they think my god what will happen uh, if he does not take uh, the responsibility of our country or of our uh, village or of our kingdom? <laughs> there was a very saintly Brahmana in Keturi. His name was Sri Krishna Das. From Sri Naratam heard about Sri Gaurahari and his loving associates every day. This made him weep and cry out, Ha Gauranga! So we see here this connection of them is eternal because Gauranga was not anymore on this planet, but still he was listening about the Leelas and the life from a day, saintly, very saintly Brahmana, and he became so attracted. This is what his heart was yearning, to be in the association of the Vaishnavas. One day Narottam had a dream in which he saw Sri Nityananda Prabhu telling him to go and bathe in the Padmavati river to accept the jewel of Prema that Sriman Mahaprabhu had deposited there. See, now the stories, they become connected. Last uh, Tuesday, we heard how Naratam was expected to take birth and Mahaprabhu or Goranga was calling his name in that village, in that river. Oh, Naratam. Now we hear that Naratam, as the eternal servant of Srimati Radhika, of Sri Gauranga, also had the same longing. He was calling Ha Gauranga. And he heard in his dream Gauranga call him, or Nityananda. Actually, it was Nityananda. Nitai is the Guru Tattva, is calling us for certain services and especially when they are giving the services to the great souls who have come from the divine abode to take you know, a role here in their leelas, then this connection is already very deep. So he had, one day, Narottam had a dream in which he saw Sri Nityananda telling him to go and bathe in the Padmavati river to accept the jewel of Prema that Mahaprabhu had deposited there. So that's very interesting because Mahaprabhu knew that this special Dasi would come and continue what he wanted to be continued here on this pla pla uh, earth planet in this Kali Yuga. 
And that's why he, he sent Nityananda to tell Naratam, but both of them had already left the planet. But Maha, uh, Mahaprabhu, Naratam got up early in the morning after the stream. And when he began to go down into the water of the Padmavati River, it was close by. Her waters began to swell. Because this river, Padmavati, she herself, she was asking Gauranga, how can I recognize the personality that you are describing to me, that I should give this prema? How will I know? Because so many people come here, also saints and holy persons. And then she was told that you will feel the rising of your emotions. That is the meaning of her uh, waters begin to swell. It's amazing. Yes, it is amazing. <laughs> It's amazing that this is possible to, uh, to put emotions to store somewhere. This is more than amazing, right? To and uh, not only to store, but also make a, a special for only one person. So there are emotions. A bath is there. He put on a special place in a river, and not everybody got it. Only this one person. It's amazing how this can be possible. <laughs> yes. Emotions are personal. God is the personality of God. Yeah. But how to store it there in a river? Oh, I think, I think the Bahav, the emotions, the world reality is made of emotions. And the question is how to open the door to let them come. And that happened in the river. <laughs> yes, and Goranga himself, you know, he was storing the emotions and you know what he told. He said to Nityananda, you know, you were crying so much and I collected your feelings, mm. your prayer. I collected them, I kept them and I put them now here. And he was showing us also like this, the importance of Nitai, of Ananga Mandri again and again, how to connect us with the deepest feelings of divine love. And it's not depending on time. <clears throat> we can see when he left it, Navatam was not here on the planet, right? No, he had, he was just going to come. Hmm? So that means this is a, a, a mystic power somehow to store something over a time. Mm -hmm. What is actually actually only aware, you cannot only aware in the in the same moment. Like emotions. Emotions are there coming and going by two person. And here we can see these emotions are there and they are even after years, they're coming out. Mm. This is a, a special, uh, it's hard to understand. But this is also like very important for us when we know that we can also connect to the emotions of Naratam Dastako like we are doing now. Mm -hmm. We might not be like, a, you know, self-realized personality on the level that Naratam Dastaku is and but still the the subject is how to connect to the feelings of 
the great masters. That is and the, the great. Huh? Yes, that is the subject. And we can connect by connecting my feelings, our feelings to their feelings. Or even only desiring it. You know, even many devotees, they, they say, and I also say, I have no emotions. I feel like a stone today or some, you know, non-emotional covering is there in my heart due to some blockages and some material, you know, identification or some problems. But then when the emotions are again put in the right flow or in the right direction, and we connect with the words in the songs, especially in the prayers of Naratam Das Tako here in this case, then also my emotions can be clear again. And that is actually, I feel, an ongoing process. How to clear my emotions and to focus my emotions to the emotions of the Dasis of Srimati Radhi. Mm -hmm. I think this is just what I feel too, Sunny. Very nice. And the one who opens us to these emotions, that is Guru. Yes. Guru, Guru Kripa means opening us to this world of emotion. Very so, nice. in a way, we could say, yeah, that was a special mercy no, for Naratam. Mm. But not only for Naratam, because this was for generations to come to flow in the love of of that, you know, mercy of Nitai, of Goranga, who want to connect with that by connecting to the feelings, especially also expressed in his songs and in this Prema Bhakti Chandrika. And I feel that there is a, they use a medium. In this case, it was a water. Mm. And, uh, in other case, they use a medium like a book to store the feelings inside. And also, we have to understand that the Guru is a medium. This, this bath is, is there in this medium. Mm -hmm. There is uh, one water, there is a book, and there is a Guru, a person. Who is the pipeline where these feelings are continuously flowing? So then you see the, the power of Chaitanya. He can put uh, these uh, feelings uh, everywhere, mm -hmm. even in the hearts of uh, a lion or a tiger, not lion, a tiger, <laughs> yeah. a deer. He used he can use everything in the material world uh, to overcome these uh, this feelings, even water. So this is uh, for me. It's it's amazing how how powerful this uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was, where he put his emotions, his love, his bath. Everything what comes in contact to them uh, was infected. And still, we can see in, in Guru how powerful it is. And what you say, Uddhava, we have to open, we have to be open for this. Then it can happen. This is just what I feel. I really, I really so strongly, I'm so grateful that you say this about Mahaprabhu. I think this is exactly how to understand his, the meaning of his appearance. That before Mahaprabhu, then the feeling, the, the pain, the emotion, the feeling was a monopoly. <laughs> and he, he came and give, give it to everyone. Everyone is qualified now mm. to have access to this. Yeah. That is the Odaya, the greatest mercy and the greatest compassion. 
that uh, Gauranga and Nityananda came to share, give, and we can, when our pots are open, I can receive also. Joy, Nidai! <laughs> So let's hear what then happened. Shinaratam got up early in the morning. And when he began to go down into the water of the Padmavati River, her waves began to swell. Recognizing Naratam, Padmavati gave him the jewels of Prema that Sriman Mahaprabhu had deposited in her. When Narottama received this prema, his complexion, his bodily effulgence changed and he became overwhelmed with great feelings of ecstatic love. Bathing in his own tears, he danced around frantically. So he got the virus of Prem. <laughs> he got the feelings of Nitai. And Gurudev, isn't it that, yeah, we are living from the feelings of the mercy of Nitai? Because even, even Gauranga, he said, it is your tears that I have stored. Oops, we cannot listen, Gurudev. No voice. Can someone open the mic there in Gurudev's room for us to hear? Thank you. One Japanese devotee going to the house, doing kirtan and this. Oh, nice. I just wanted to listen one drop of you, Mouth Gurudev, about the glories of Nitai, how he, you know, his tears, his feelings, Mahaprabhu distributed because Nitai is the Akanda Guru Tattva and they are distributed and received through Nitai's mercy. All Guru's Guru is Nitai. Because she is Radhika's sister. Yes. Abhudut, because he say I am brother of Krishna, but he behave like a sister of Radhika. This is the time. Mr. Kalgudi. Uh, is Abdut. Because of this, he is Abdut. He says something, do something. Mm. He is always in Raman. Mm. Because he is a Manjiri also, a Sakhi also. Manjiri, not. But when he becomes Sakhi, he has to follow the Radhika order to go to Krishna. Then he becomes Sakhi. That time he, he always is Raman with Krishna. Extraordinary Shakti. And always serving to Radhika because she is the Mandir. Only in the Thai can do this. We cannot. Mm. No. So serving both, serving Krishna as the brother who is helping or whatever needs and Srimati Radhika as the Manjari and also Srimati Radhika in her desires to please Mohan. Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. Eating at a one person, people become crazy to understand. You cannot grasp it from material feelings. 
Uh, and this is Mansi of Nitash. Mm. <coughs> oh, Nadi. Oh, she had him. So when Naratam received this prema, his complexion changed and he became overwhelmed with great feelings of ecstatic love. Ecstatic means he was dancing, he was crying, he was rolling on the ground. He became, like Gurudev said, also Avadud. Because everyone who receives this prema bhakti, and especially this prema bhakti of the tiger ranga in this Kali Yuga, for all souls to be able to become servants of divine Srimati Radhika. By the mercy of Nitai, by the mercy of Guru. That is an extraordinary ecstasy. Bathing in his own tears, he danced around frantically. And we hear also that Naratam was so empowered by Nityananda's love and prema that when he was singing in this mood, then Nitya Gauranga would appear and dance in that kirtan. Many devotees have um, witnessed that, and it's written down also in his uh, biography. And it's a very mystical and also inspiring feeling to connect that when there's so much feeling and so much uh, desire in the heart, then Nita and Gaur will come and pick us up. Gurudev will come and pick us up. We are all connected through each other's feelings. That is an open secret. It happens to all of us. But then again, when the father and mother saw this of Narottam, they felt that he was uh, uh, becoming mad, like a disease of madness has caught him, and they became very worried. Like our parents, I mean, we are not Narottam Das Thakur, but also when we were younger and we started to chant Mahmantra and then the parents were worried also, what is going to become of my baby boy or baby girl? But it is all good. There's no harm in becoming a receptacle of mercy, a receiver of mercy and love. You see Raghunathas, mm. parents of Raghunath. Yes. They, they try to lock him somewhere. Yes. Because they needed somebody to take care of their life's uh, inheritance. And uh, yeah, nowadays also some devotees, they have problems, not all, but some. Because the family members, they don't like that they become mad in the holy name. <laughs> and no, mad. But also to do nothing. Not so they, some are, uh, uh, become. Uh, um, Inactive. Yeah, that's another point, of course. But still, with the mercy of Nityananda, we all become blessed to do the services that are, um, how you say, inviting us also to help myself to grow spiritually and help others also. And that's also good if desire, he always say, Multiply, multiply. <laughs> we cannot, uh, we cannot, uh, what is vergleichen? Compare. Compare this ecstatic ecstasy of uh, 
of Raghunath or Nid, uh, Naratham. Naratham with uh, those, uh, we say, devotees who uh, uh, these are uh, uh, really uh, self-realized souls then. And those kind of self-realized souls are very rare to find. Isn't it? Yes. We should not compare this with others. No, no. But by the mercy of Guru and Gauranga, our spiritual life will also be blessed and successful. That's all. That's the possibility. And even others may judge and criticize, but the mercy of Nitai and Goranga is there for all of us at the same time. We also can see the parents of St. Francis, right? Or the parents of Jesus. They all was uh, more than disturbed. Shocked. Shocked. <laughs> because these uh, they become complete useless for the world. And they have some fear because of this. Because they like to see the so-called normal entwicklung. Development. Development. But then uh, the normal development does not happen. Yes, it happens as it happens. <laughs> Sometimes the children are too spiritual, or maybe they also become not as spiritual enough. <laughs> but we all take it as Radharani's mercy. We don't like to. Like we have heard now that the the quality of a Dasi, of someone who is very close to Ananda, our Ladini Shakti, our Shimati Radhika, is a sweet, sweet words. And always, uh, like Urdiv said, I want to close the circle like this after one hour, that the Dasi and the mood of the of the divine uh, servants, it's not to create any conflict, to be harmonizing, to be inspiring, and to be in the sweetest mood that I can uh, be. And if the mood is not so sweet, then I just try to increase the sweetness. I have to drink some more sugar cane juice <laughs> of Prema Kata. And, uh, yeah, lift the spirits. So we are all in that category of, of you know, flowing, floating in, in the different feelings that are coming every day and in all different circumstances. But to always be in the sweetness of service of Srimati Radhika's mood, that is I our know. destiny. That is our eternal position. That is my uh, innermost, um, how do you say, um, home. To be home in that sweetness and to come out of uh, any other mood as much as I can during the day, during my week. And I just want to be practical because we are speaking here about very exalted personalities. And, and uh, like you said, we are not all on this level. But we want to connect with that, we want to uh, serve that, and we want to cherish the, the, you know, this great mystic element of how to receive feelings and how to increase feelings for the spiritual development and for the service. Okay, is there anyone else who wants to share on this subject? I see there are so many nice devotees here. Also, I saw uh, our dear 
Raz Eshwari with her kids and I'm so happy to see you and to be with you. Radacharan, you want to add something? I see you are chanting like mad. Hey, Raz Eshwari. <laughs> I can only say from observing Gurudev in his likings also, especially the songs of Naratam Dastako have a very deep impact. And that's why also we invite so many singers in our Munger Raj Mande who are singing the deep Pratana songs. And I see always how, how uh, inspired we all are by these songs when we hear them early in the morning. And I can only say for myself that uh, the life story of, of the saints have always been a big hope for me that um, something will uplift also in my dull consciousness. And especially Naratam Dastako, he is so uh, extraordinary in his uh, way of how he was sharing with the devotees. He was not writing any big scriptures. He was mostly singing. And that singing is by the heart, by the feelings, and by the tears, with his uh, sweetest uh, connection to being, you know, a Dasi of Srimati Radhika, and also inspiring others to realize that they have this beautiful, beautiful chance right now. And uh, yeah, very mystical how to connect with the divine or spiritual feelings to each other and to uplift each other in that regard and to connect again and again. Even if I lose my connection, there's always a hope and a chance to connect again and again. Right, Udavji, what is your feeling? What to oh, say, yeah? Fun. No, I'm there, I'm there. Okay. <laughs> I was deep in some thoughts. Mm. Yes, anything that leads us to connect is divine. All the things you name and all the ways you describe daily life. I'm a particularly I'm particularly happy about cooking that you said earlier. These are places where we can find this opening towards Prema. Where we can find the opening towards this reservoir that Aurasundara was describing before. It's it's all around us. I insist that it's not Prema is not hiding away a special place in a cave on a mountain. Radhe, radhe. <laughs> that it's everywhere. Oh, is, it's everywhere, yes. It's everywhere, and, and our only challenge is to connect to it. And Guru is the wow. most powerful connection, but a beautiful poem, a tasteful facade dish, a beautiful smile, a small caress. This is, these are small places where we connect to play. So we, we must make them bigger. <laughs> mm. Yes, let the love grow. 